the best scrum masters and coaches that I know realize that agile isn't a thing, but in fact, agile is a doorway. Let's talk about it. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello to all my friends. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. Great to see you. A quarter century since the inception of agility, many of us are stuck in a rat hole of believing that the value is in the agile concept or the scrum process itself. And that following it religiously is the best thing we can do for our clients and customers. But it's not. Agile is actually a doorway to greater things. And I want to discuss with you what those are today. But first, let's take a moment to remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we focus on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. If this helps you, please share it with your friends. And I'm pleased to announce the start of the Summer Cohort of the Forge, the year-long leadership immersion experience for professionals. So if you're looking to up your game, stand out in this current market, and truly have impact and influence with your teams, your clients, your customers, reach out to me at chris at badassagile.com. Here's the thing. It's not the same world that we set foot into 25 years ago. When Agile first landed, at least I'm told, that the idea was to make the software development process or flow better. It was meant to make the work itself better, but it was also there to make better products, better solutions, better outcomes. But I see that vision as having expanded in the past quarter century. I think we could be doing so much more with it. And the most interesting leaders that I encounter understand that what we used to do in the software development room is highly applicable to a bunch of different areas of life and practice. Here are some great examples. The first one that I've been talking about for a couple of years is anything beyond tech. Using Agile for learning and development, for human resources, for sales, for marketing. That's the first one. If you learn how to deliver outcomes in a software team room, you can deliver outcomes anywhere. And that's important to note because guess what those departments will always be interested in? More sales, a faster process for hiring people, a faster process for implementing new policy, new pay structures, a faster process for getting learning and development assets tested and into the marketplace so that we can benefit from them sooner. The list goes on and on and on. We're no longer thinking about delivering software features or software products. We're delivering on outcomes. If you want to master agility outside the technical team room, you have to think about using agile for business outcomes. Step two, we could take it far beyond commerce. Couldn't we bring this wonderful set of principles and even some of the techniques into places like the creative arts? See, I'm thinking now about all of the places that AI can't touch because it's not smart enough yet to do things like be creative, to come up with cool new ideas, to create real engagement, real personal connection, to be a triple threat entrepreneur. Those are things that AI can't help us do yet. So those things, those pursuits are always going to be attached to a workflow that can be slow, prone to procrastination, prone to dragging out, prone to complexity, prone to big team bloat, But if we could bring our agile concepts and practices to the creative arts, to innovation, then I think it would become easier to create more, better quality stuff and to do it more consistently, more fearlessly. That's what I really want. It's not that I want to see us create more content per unit time, but I want to see people who are creators get to the point of production and delivery much faster with less friction and less resistance, which leads me to my next point. True agility is a gateway to awesome leadership. Everything that we've learned in practice, think of all the great principles that we've learned about prioritization, about delivering in small iterative cycles, feeding back frequently. When you take those principles and add them to great leadership principles, you create, once again, 
a double or triple threat in terms of leadership. Not only do agile leaders, coaches, scrum masters get empathy better than anybody else, they get giving and receiving feedback better than anybody else. They understand the humanity of what we do and they're willing to prioritize the happiness of their teams. You take that and staple it to the fact that if you're using something like Scrum, Lean, Kanban, you have really great tools and techniques for actually managing the flow of work. So whether you're a mid-level manager, a junior manager, a senior leader, an executive, all of these techniques can help you. What do they help us do? They help us make better organizations, don't they? They help us make better teams, but not just inside the software delivery room. Which brings me to my final point. We should be using what we know about Agile, what we've learned in practice over the past quarter century, to solve more interesting problems. If only a few elite Agile leaders would step up and see it as their duty to contribute to, to help solve some of the problems that we see inside our companies, business, corporations, and beyond. Think about the problems that we've had with burnout. Think about the problems that we've had with toxic leadership. Think about what we've experienced and learned about remote work. What about digital learning? What about immersive virtual reality and artificial intelligence? All of these forces are new. And if we can help companies understand them, manage them, and strategize about them more quickly, we're providing an excellent service that I don't think we do today. See, probably the most important thing that I've learned and experienced doing Agile over the past 18, 20 years, whatever it's been now, is that leaders can emerge from anywhere. The title doesn't matter. Your office location doesn't matter. Where you sit doesn't matter. What Agile has enabled us to do is to go courageously into the unknown, knowing that we have a system, knowing that we have a framework, knowing that we have a mindset and an attitude about how to deliver an experiment and embrace failure and be comfortable with learning through experimentation. Because we know these things, because we embrace them, we are excellent candidates to help lead companies into the future. Could we then help solve bigger problems inside our company or beyond? Bigger problems like income inequality, depression, anxiety. This is where we really have the potential to shine. Because while there are a great many leaders with great intention around the world in every arena, the one thing that I see is difficulty delivering, difficulty orchestrating groups of diverse people to come to a conclusion efficiently, quickly. Not everything in the world should take three and a half years to bring to fruition. And as Agile leaders, we have the capability to do that. It's our gift. It's what we're trained on. So let me ask you this question. I'd be interested to hear your feedback. Is it possible that we are so much bigger than software development and product features? Is it possible? We're so much bigger than Bank Agile. Is it possible that everything that we've learned and taken away from this great thing that has been the subject of this podcast for over six years now, that we could use it where we need it most, not just to make better products, but to make a better world? And again, it's so much more than bringing your laptop with a Jira install on it to your 4-H club or Boy Scouts of America. I'm talking about your ability to go courageously and say, I don't know how to solve this problem, but I know from experience that everything is solvable. Can we learn to say, I don't have a title, I don't have an office, I don't have a fancy business card, but I know that I want to help and I can see a future in which change is possible and I want to be there to help drive it. Can we learn from everything we've experienced that we're far better to listen to our customers and say, what hurts? What do you need? How could this be better? Why isn't it working? And apply it to the real problems that are causing us pain. Because our world isn't a healthy place. I don't know if you've noticed. We could be doing a hell of a lot better. And those problems have nothing to do with CRM integration, my friends. They have to do with how we can learn from each other, how we can collaborate better, how we can deal with the realities of an 8 billion person planet that is never going to stop growing. How do we handle the division, the cruelty, the intolerance, the inhumanity? Not only can we deliver software better, we can be better as a species, as a planet. And I think Agile is the doorway to getting that done. My friends, I hope this one inspired and educated you. You can reach out as always at badassagile.com. You can find me on Instagram at Badass Agile. You can look for me on LinkedIn. And you can join the Facebook Badass Agile Listener Lounge. I look forward to seeing you next time 
And until then, stay badass.